He's won this event five times. It has been five years since he competed over this quarter-mile racing service. He is considered the innovator of the sport. Given credit for creating the first workable rear-engine top fuel dragster. His name, Don Garland. He hails from the state of Florida, and his fans, they are legion, and they call him Big Daddy. Big Daddy Don Garlitz returning to competition at Indianapolis Raceway Park and the U.S. Nationals for the first time in five years holds top speed of the meet at over 261 miles an hour. In this second round race, he will be competing against Howard Haight of Pomona, California. Earlier this morning, Steve had a chance to talk to Big Daddy Don Garlitz about his return to NHRA competition and to Indianapolis Raceway Park. Well, Don, after a five-year absence, you returned to the U.S. Nationals here at Indianapolis, and you didn't come to just play. 261 miles an hour got their attention. Well, we came here with the intention of winning the race. Uh, you know, of course, anything can happen in a race, but, I mean, that's was, we wasn't here just for the beer. Garlitz and Malone. I haven't said that for 25 years. 59 or 60 the last time you two teamed up. That's true. It has. It's the 25-year uh, anniversary. Uh, Malone called me on the phone. He says, uh, you know, I'd like to go to Indy. Are you going to Indy? I said, no. You know, it costs so much money. He said, well, how about if I sponsor you to Indy? And I said, that's the greatest news I've heard in a long time. Let's do it. Garlitz teaming up with his longtime partner and friend, Art Malone, for this venture in the U.S. Nationals competition. In round number two, he's racing against Howard Haight. 261 miles an hour already to the credit of Big Daddy Don Garlitz. Howard Haight with his work cut out for him, racing one of the true legends in the sport of championship drag racing. It's Garlitz off the mark first. He's got a big lead right off the starting line, and at the finish, he extends it. The elapsed time for Garlitz, 5.61 seconds. His speed is slowing 234 miles an hour. And again, it appears to be some engine problems for Garlitz. There's lots of work for them back in the pits, the Garlitz and Malone team. Our next pair in top fuel competition finds Dick LaHaye from Lansing, Michigan, getting set to do his burnout. Those tires, nearly 18 inches wide, grow in height by some six inches as they spin in the water, the smoke coming off of them, indicating they're burning. LaHaye will be racing the upset winner in round number one. That is the team owner of the all-star racing team, Larry Miner from San Jacinto, California. Dick LaHaye, a serious racer from the Midwest, actually has the qualifying advantage over his competition, Larry Miner. In qualifying, Dick LaHaye moved into the number five spot, while the best Miner could muster was the number nine position. But in the first round, remember, Miner was not intended to be to this point of competition. It was to have been his number one driver, Gary Beck, but mechanical troubles put him out. So now the boss, the team owner, has got to carry the standard of the all-star racing team further in top fuel competition against LaHaye. Miner pulling out to the lead in the middle of the course and at the finish line by a car length. It is Larry Miner with the win. 5.54 seconds elapsed time at over 244 miles an hour. Now let's go down and join Steve Evans with Don Garland. You certainly haven't lost a touch in the last five years. That's two down, Don. Well, it's, the car's running pretty good. She's a little loose on the top end, though. I guess, you know, the rain and everything. I, engine come up twice, and I, I actually lifted a little early, so speed was probably down. Spinning the tires towards the finish line? Uh-huh, yeah. Well, that parachute is sure lazy. We waited again, holding our breath. Well, you know, I was so rattled from the run before when I lost the wheel, I, I held onto the, the steering wheel for a while, because that's where the big jerk comes when the tire comes off. And I realized, heck, I'm holding onto this wheel. I should be letting this shoot out. <laughs> okay, we'll see you down here in round number three. Don Garlett, Howard Hay. Okay, and congratulations, Big Daddy. Garlitz making the power of old, actually spinning the tires at the finish line. Here's a man that Garlitz raced in the early days of drag racing, another of the veterans of the sport, Connie Coletta. His competition here in round number two of Top Fuel Racing is Frank Bradley. Bradley, hailing from Napa, California, was the winner of the recent NHRA Summer Nationals. For Cotty Coletta, his career in drag racing goes back to his first ever NHRA championship win. That dated back to 1967. 
just as competitive today as he has ever been, and many people regard this 46-year-old veteran is at the peak of his career, driving better today than he has at any time in history. For Frank Bradley, he proved once again he has the combination to his top fuel dragster, qualifying on one pass through the quarter mile. The burnout procedures are completed. Both drivers approach the staging beams and leave the starting line. And it is Coletta and Bradley side by side. Coletta begins to pull away. And by a couple of car lengths at the finish line, Coletta taking the win at 5.72 seconds. His speed topping 240 miles an hour. Connie Coletta advances now into the semifinals of top fuel competition at the U.S. Nationals. This is the fastest driver ever in the history of top fuel racing. This is Joe Amato. He has been over 264 miles an hour. But at this event, he holds the distinction of recording the lowest elapsed time at 5.46 seconds thus far. This pairing once again matches the relative newcomer, Joe Amato, against the KG veteran, a man with over 20 years' experience in fuel racing, Gene Snow. Snow laid out of the sport for several years, then came back with this highly competitive top fuel dragster. Let's go once again down to Steve. Now, Danny, a 572 gets you through the second round, but I know you'd like to have gone quicker. Yeah, I need to. Amato's going to run awful quick right now. He ran 46 earlier today, and I mean, that's, that's a stout number. Yeah, that's the quickest run here, I think, in quite a while. If Amato gets through this round, uh, you'll face him the, in the semi? I run him next round, and the lane choice is very important here right now. We're shaking very bad in the right-hand lane, and uh, I backed the car off because I didn't know for sure with my race car or not, but it looks like it's a track that's doing it. It's not your particular race car that's suffering that problem? No, in the first round, just about everybody in the right-hand lane shook very hard. Uh, the only one that didn't was the minor that got, he got down there very good. Uh. Okay, well, let's go back to the starting line and see if, indeed, it'll be Connie Coletta and Joe Amato in the semis. Steve, in this case, Joe Amato taking the near lane, or the lane that Connie says is better. For Gene Snow, he has to cope with the problem. Not only will the car, will the engine perform up to par, will the lane hold the horsepower? What appears to be a little smoke coming out of Snow's car, could it be a problem? And up in smoke goes Amato. He loses traction right off the starting line, and the upset of this round of racing, Gene Snow, the veteran, 5.62 seconds, his speed over 240 miles an hour. The semifinals, Larry Miner against Don Garlitz, Connie Coletta against Gene Snow, as we'll be coming right back to the U.S. National. At the U.S. Nationals at Indianapolis Raceway Park, it is Mark Oswald driving the Candies and Hughes special with a new engine. They hurt the motor in the first round of racing. Now they have put in a brand new engine to race against the reigning world champion driving the Chi Town Hustler. This is Frank Hawley. Hawley from London, Ontario, Canada has won the world championship for two consecutive years, but he is out of the hunt in the points chase this season. The man that is leading, though, is Mark Oswald. He picked up those valuable bonus points by establishing a new national record, and he is hot after that world champion title. The man that's already won the top fuel title is Joe Amato. Joe Amato yells over at Connie Coletta with a big smile. Looks like it's your turn. This world championship would uh, save just about any wound here today, huh? Yeah, we really wanted to try and do good and win the race, Steve. There's nothing like winning Indy, you know. It would have been uh, the coupe de gras, so to speak, you know. The car just had a little too much power in it. We took some power out of it because we thought the track would be going away, but apparently we didn't take enough out, and it just went out there and smoked the tires. I tried to pedal it, but it just, you know, it was just hopeless. It just, it just overpowered the track. Well, you've had a wonderful year, and you wear the world championship beautifully. Mark Oswald, number two in the world last season, wants to wear the number one. He is racing against the man that won that world championship last year, Frank Hawley in the far lane. Oswald qualified number one, Hawley number five, but boy, this is a close race. Look at the finish, and it's Hawley by half a car length, and the upset, very consistent, 5.79 seconds at over 256 miles an hour. Frank Hawley puts away the new national record holder, the points leader and the man that qualified in the number one spot. Hawley driving that Chi-Town Hustler picked up a very slight lead off the start. He began to extend it and won the race.
Frank, 256 miles an hour, that's the fastest you've ever gone. Well, uh, generally, we don't run it right to the last light, but when you're racing Mark, my goodness, I saw him about half track, and he was in front, and their car always runs fast. Uh, it fell off a little bit, and I wasn't taking any chance. I drove it right out the back door, is what they say. Even though you've won two world titles, this one's eluded you. You'd like it. Oh, gosh, anybody uh, that's ever drag raced would like to win Indy, the, the Nationals, uh, uh, all, all I ever do is I remember who was the world champion last year and who won Indy, and I want to win. <laughs> and he's on his way to the semis. Steve, we'll find out in just a few moments how he does as the next pairing again. The relative newcomer against the KG veteran. The man from Columbus, Ohio is Jim Head. His main claim to fame, he finished in the runner-up spot at the recent NHRA Cajun Nationals Championship down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Head pulling into the water box, totally unsponsored, running the car on his own, does a very brief and short burnout. He's 35 years old and is regarded by many as one of the rising stars of the sport. He's racing against one of the true stars. This is Ed the Ace McCulloch driving the other all-star racing team entry of Larry Miner. A huge crowd on hand under threatening skies. Last night, a severe thunderstorm struck the sprawling Indianapolis Raceway Park facility. In fact, rain earlier this morning delayed the start of competition, but the track now dry and safe. Let's go down to Steve with Mark Oswald. Boy, Mark, you hated to change engines, but it had to be done, huh? Yeah, I guess it was a little rich. They said they saw a drop of sonar. It was a good race in mid-track. I was actually a little ahead of him, and like he said, you know, our car's got a good top end, but not that time. It was just running on seven cylinders. Well, you worked hard, and you ran very well, and congratulations on being the quickest driver of all time in this category. Thank you. Mark Oswald holds the national record. He is leading the points chase, but he is very disappointed at his loss in the second round of competition for this prestigious U.S. Nationals title. Two drivers that are in the thick of the chase, Ed McCulloch in the near lane, Jim Head in the far lane. The burnouts are over. The staging procedure is almost completed, and it's a good start for both drivers. It is McCulloch with a slight lead, but Jim Head begins to come on, and at the finish line, a big upset. It is Jim Head from Columbus, Ohio, the man the best finish thus far only a runner-up spot 5.92 seconds but look at his speed 255 miles an hour and that's where he came around and defeated Ed McCulloch at the finish line so two of the three all-star racing team entries of Larry Miner are out of competition the only car remaining is the boss himself Back at the starting line, we're into the burnout procedures as we have more funny cars. These 2,500 horsepower plus fiberglass creations are one of the crowd's favorites, and this is one of the best. Tom the Mongoose McEwen, hailing from Fountain Valley, California. McEwen is regarded by many as one of the premier drivers ever to sit behind the wheel of a championship drag racing car. He's driven them all from a top fuel dragster to a funny car, you name it. For John Collins, a long and illustrious career for Collins, he calls Long Beach, California home. They're meeting here on the starting line at the U.S. Nationals, the most prestigious race of them all. It was in 1978 that Tom McEwen pulled off the upset of that year as he defeated Don Prudhomme in the finals of Funny Car. The Mongoose would love to repeat this year. John Collins trying to stop him, though. Can it be done? Let's see. Collins up in smoke, and it is McEwen just glued to the asphalt and through the finish line and almost losing control as the parachutes come out. John Collins coasts across the finish line, but for McEwen, a 5.85 seconds at 238 miles an hour. One of the surprise winners has been Jim Head. I can tell you exactly how you won that, a big top end charge at 255. Well, I thought it was running pretty hard on the high end, and uh, I, I went around him in the top of high gear, and I didn't see him anymore when I went across the finish line. And that kind of speed uh, doesn't really pay you any money, but it tells you you've got a lot of power there that maybe you could work on the elapsed time with. Well, my race cars have been running a lot of speed all year. We run 260 already this year. We run over 258 about four or five times, and a lot of 255, so hopefully we'll get a little more ET out of it for this race. Yeah, it's going to take better than 590. Is that what it ran, 590? It's a little slow. Jim Head, knowing he has to improve on his elapsed time performance, but he's already made it into the semifinals. We'll find out how he does in just a short while. Right now, we're down to the last two cars in this round of racing. Kenny Bernstein is in the near lane, and his fellow Texan doing the burnout in the far lane is Billy Meyer from Waco, Texas. 
It was one year ago that Kenny Bernstein had one of the greatest three weeks in championship drag racing. He won nearly $100,000, culminating that streak with a big win at the U.S. Nationals. His competition is a man that started driving funny cars at the tender age of 16, Billy Meyer. Meyer is lined up in his Mustang in the far lane in the Ford Tempo-bodied creation will be Bernstein in the near lane. Both cars highly competitive, and it is Bernstein off the mark first. Smoking the tires is Meyer, and Bernstein with an easy go. Runs over 249 miles an hour at 5.84 seconds. That sets up our semi-final round of competition in Funny Car. Jim Head against Tom McEwen, Frank Hawley against Kenny Bernstein. All this preparation has been going on. We've been having the second round of Pro Stock Eliminator. In the factory hot rods in the near lane, it was Lee Shepard driving for the team of Rare and Morrison. Gordy Rivera in the far lane, and Rivera pulled off the upset. Mechanical troubles slowed Shepard, and Rivera a happy man as he won. <laughs> Gordy Rivera, Yuma, Arizona. Like any drag racer who's ever beaten Lee Shepard, he is very excited about it. I like that one. I bet you did. What happened on the starting line up there? I was super ready. I figured another one. <laughs> you know, so many drivers red light against Shepard and really give away their chance at a starting line. I've done that once this year. I said I wasn't going to do it no more. I waited for that yellow and I left. <laughs> I tell you, it's good to see a new face down here uh, in the pro stock standings and a uh, beautiful job of the beautiful car, Goody. Thank you. Thank you. We then watch the classic Ford versus Chevrolet battle. In the near lane, it is Bob Glidden, the hometown favorite, driving his Ford Thunderbird against New Jersey's Frank Iaconio, driving his Chevrolet Camaro. Both cars left the starting line with the wheels in the air as the power was applied down the quarter-mile racetrack. At the finish line, it was the Ford Thunderbird just eking out a win by half a car leg. These guys are not good, and I'm telling you, Will. We're going to have to make some changes. We need to run a little better than we've run. We need to run a middle 60. A funny car driver, top field, that can put in more nitro or drive the blower harder. What does a pro stock guy do to whittle off a few hundreds? We'll probably change engines between this round and the next. Our next pair of cars saw the Oldsmobile of Warren Johnson in the near lane racing against the Pontiac Firebird of Ronnie Manchester. The two cars came off the starting line relatively even, but it was not long before the power of the Oldsmobile took over, and by several car lengths, it was Warren Johnson taking the second round win over Ronnie Manchester. Our final pair in round number two of Pro Stock Racing found Joe Lapone Jr. driving a Pontiac in the near lane against the bright red Camaro owned by Bob Pinella and driven by the veteran Ken Dondero. Dondero had the slight advantage off the starting line. He held the lead at this point, but the power of Joe Lapone's car almost pulled out a win. Oh, so close at the finish. Look at the times. 7.79 for Lapone, Dondero at 7.82. The advantage off the starting line paid off. There's our semifinalists. Ken Dondero against Bob Glidden. Gordy Rivera against Warren Johnson. It is Johnson, number four in the world last year, driving the Oldsmobile Cutlass. Gordy Rivera at the wheel of his Chevrolet Camaro. These cars use engines up to 500 cubic inches in displacement, run on racing gasoline, are limited to two four-barrel carburetors, and must weigh no less than 2,350 pounds with the driver. Very evenly matched. The Oldsmobile in the far lane, the Chevrolet in the near lane, the factory hot rods of championship drag racing's Pro Stock Eliminator. The power of Johnson's Oldsmobile proves out to be the winner at 7.64 seconds at a speed of over 181 miles an hour. So Warren Johnson of Duluth, Georgia, advances into the finals of the 30th annual U.S. Nationals. Here is the Ford Thunderbird of Bob Glidden using a 500 cubic inch shotgun Ford engine, a race motor designed and developed by Ford against him. Ken Dondero driving Bob Canella's car. This with the big block 500 cubic inch Chevrolet motor. The fans love it when the Ford versus Chevrolet battle matches up on the starting line. The teaming of Ken Dondero and Bob Vanella is a rematch of a driver-owner team that dated back over a decade in drag racing. The Ford of Glidden in the far lane, Ken Dondero in the near lane. Together they leave the starting line. It is Dondero and Glidden side by side, and at the finish line, it is by a half a car length, Bob Glidden, 772.
at a speed of over 178 miles an hour. As we watch again, you see the two cars almost as one clawing into the air, the front wheels off the pavement, the rear tires trying to get a hold of the pavement, pulling the cars ahead, headed for that finish line 1,320 feet away. As they reach the speed traps at the finish line, Glidden begins to pull ahead and by a half a car length, takes the win. That sets up the finals in pro stock, Bob Glidden against Warren Johnson. They're down to the semifinals in Funny Car Eliminator. Kenny Bernstein in their near lane, the defending champion against the reigning world champion, the Chi-Town Hustler with Frank Hawley at the wheel. The burnout procedures are completed. All that's left is to light those two yellow bulbs at the top of the Christmas tree. The green light comes on and Hawley, out of shape off the starting line, has to lift. And it is Kenny Bernstein for the second year in a row into the finals of Funny Car Eliminator at the U.S. Nationals. Some engine problems, possibly 5.74 seconds. A great time for Bernstein. His speed, 250 miles an hour. And what a disappointment this has to be for Frank Hawley as he goes out in the semi finals. The veteran Tom McEwen, the mongoose he's known as, is in the near lane. Here is the newcomer to funny car racing. He only started this season, Jim Head from Columbus, Ohio. Let's go to Steve. Two years in a row you go to the finals. Last year you won it. Well, you know, it's a long way to there yet. One more run and a hard one. Holly and those guys are super. But we're glad to be there. We're glad to be there. They apparently had some sort of problem on the starting line. I don't know if you could see it or not. A fuel leak or something? No, I didn't know. Didn't have any idea. At that stage, you're not worrying too much about that. In your own right. You got your own problems to take care of, and don't worry about that. And we're just lucky today we ran through there. And, of course, now we ran good. That's good. Kenny Bernstein taking dead aim on his second Nationals title in a row. For Tom McEwen, it's been a long dry spell since 1978 when he won the Funny Car Championship. For Jim Head, I am sure he is thrilled just to be in the semis and earning the right to race Tom McEwen. The driver's concentrating on the start, and it is Head and McEwen. Something going wrong with Tom McEwen's car, and another major upset as the crew for Jim Head responds in joy. Another 590 elapsed time for Head, but good enough for the semifinal win to set up this race. Kenny Bernstein against Jim Head for the final in Funny Car Eliminator. The two veterans, Don Garlitz and Connie Coletta, in the finals of time. At Indianapolis Raceway Park in the 30th annual running of the U.S. Nationals, I'm Dave McClelland, along with Steve Evans, and all eyes are on the starting line as we're set for the semi-final round of Top Fuel Eliminator. Here is Big Daddy Don Garland. He is at the U.S. Nationals for the first time in five years. It was 20 years ago that Big Daddy won his first ever U.S. Nationals title back in 1964. He's racing against Larry Miner, a relative newcomer to top fuel racing. Earlier, Steve talked with him. How does it feel for you and only your second year of driving to be going up against the legend, Big Daddy Don Garlitz? Well, really, you know, it doesn't bother me because uh, I'm relaxed out here and I'm just doing my own thing and having fun. And so there's no pressure on me. And I think that's why I can really do a pretty decent job of driving. Miner, the car owner of that all-star racing team with three cars in competition. He's the only one left. And Garlitz is pulling ahead at the finish line and puts out Larry Miner. It's Don Garlitz into the finals of the U.S. Nationals. And Larry Miner having problems with his parachute, but he seems to be bringing the car to a safe stop. For Don Garlitz, a great run in the semifinals. 5.56 second elapsed time. His speed over 254 miles an hour. As we look again, Garlitz had pulled ahead by the middle of the racetrack. He continued to hold that lead until the finish line. And by one car length, Don Garlitz advances to the finals, defeating Larry Miner. Garlitz very composed as he comes out of the car, taking off his helmet and shaking over his engine. Well, after a five-year absence, Big Daddy goes into the final with a 5.56, and a good race it was. Yes, it was. It was a real good race. I, he actually was right out there to about the eighth mile, and it just kind of pulled away. I guess I had a little higher top speed. And the engine looks just fine, dry, not a drop of oil out of it? Yeah, I had one little problem. A throttle cable was breaking up there, and we just barely got it fixed. Well, the chute worked this time. Everything worked this time. Yeah, I'm, I'm real happy, really. Let's go back to the starting line and see just who Don Garlitz is going to race in that final round. Gene Snow or Connie Coletta? Steve will know that in just a moment. The only newcomer in the sport is now out of competition in Top Fuel. It's all veterans. Connie Coletta in the near lane. 
a former funny car racer moving into the crew chief role for Shirley Muldowney when she won her first world championship, then back into driving and driving better than ever. For Gene Snow, a former funny car racer, over 20 years experience in the sport, Snow now campaigning his top fuel dragster out of his home base in Fort Worth, Texas. Snow up in smoke and Coletta beginning to extend the lead. Can he hold on to it at the finish line? A close race and the wing comes off of Snow's car. Snow with the parachute out keeps the car under control as it bounces to a safe stop. But the win goes to Connie Coletta and two veterans in the final, Don Garlett against Connie Coletta. Let's watch and see just what happened. Very close racing at the first speed light and right at the finish line, Coletta pulls ahead. From the rear angle, you can see Snow in the far lane. In the near lane is Coletta. Coletta takes the wind, but the wing just collapses on Gene Snow's car. Momentarily, he starts to lose control. The parachute out instantly, pulling the car back to straight down the racetrack, and Snow bringing it to a safe stop. Snow running 250 miles an hour on this run, did a great driving job keeping the car under control. When that wing unloads its speeds like 250 miles an hour, it can cause severe handling problems. You see the damaged struts and there's no wing at all. For Gene Snow, very, very disappointed as he had a great race going with Connie Coletta until the mechanical problems set in with the wing enjoying himself at this 30th annual U.S. Nationals. Here are two gentlemen that are enjoying themselves. Warren Johnson in the near lane as the Pro Stock final unfolds with the Oldsmobile, his mount on the far lane, the Ford Thunderbird of Bob Glidden. Johnson has won the last two NHRA national events this season. Bob Glidden is the defending champion at the U.S. Nationals. A bit of a psychological staging war going on between the two. Starter Buster Couch signals to Glidden, roll it in. He does, and the tree is green. Both cars off the mark, and it is Warren Johnson with the lead. He extends it at the finish to a half a car length, and the Oldsmobile of Warren Johnson wins the U.S. Nationals title. Warren Johnson with an outstanding performance of 7.63 seconds. His speed over 181 miles an hour for the last three races has absolutely dominated the category. As we watch again, you can see how close this race really is. From the start to the finish, less than a half a car length separates these two drivers. The Oldsmobile in the near lane of Warren Johnson, the Ford Thunderbird of Bob Glidden in the far lane, and there's the margin of difference at the finish. Well, that makes three NHRA victories in a row, but this has got to be the biggest and the most thrilling one. This is definitely the sweetest of all. There's no doubt about it. This is the first Indy I've ever won. I've never been in the finals here, and it's just everything went perfect. Here's the first finals at Indy for this man, Jim Head. In the near lane, it is the defending champion, Kenny Bernstein. Bernstein has got to be the favorite based on performance. He ran 5.74 seconds in the semifinals. Jim Head seems to be stuck in those 590s. And he said earlier, he's got to run better than that. Can he do it in the finals? He'll need everything to beat Bernstein. All eyes in this sprawling facility focused on these two funny cars. Over 5,000 horsepower leave the starting line and up in smoke goes Bernstein and Jim Head with the upset of this race has won the funny car title. For Jim Head, his first full year in funny car racing culminates with winning the most prestigious drag race of them all, the U.S. Nationals title. His crew absolutely overjoyed. There it is, another 5.96 seconds, but over 254 miles an hour. You see what happened right off the starting line. There's the smoke off the tires from Kenny Bernstein. He's lost traction. He's lost the race. And Jim Head takes the U.S. Nationals title in style. From another angle, you can see very graphically what happens. The car smoking the tires, losing traction, and Bernstein loses. Jim Head makes his first national event victory, the biggest of them all, the U.S. Nationals. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Steve. Again in the 590s, consistency wins it for you. He went up in smoke. Well, I had to lift. It was shaking hard and going towards the guardrail, but I'd already seen him go up in smoke, so I, I, rather than hit the guardrail, I thought I'd just motor on down. Just a, just a marvelous win for you and your crew. Your first year really in, uh, to, in front of car racing, coming out of top fuel. Uh, they say that's a very difficult transition to make. You've made it look easy. 
Well, I, I think it is a very tra difficult transition. Uh, it's been good for me, though, because it made me very conservative uh, having that motor in front of me. <laughs> when all the fires behind you, you tend to take some chances you wouldn't take in this configuration. Well, no question about it. All last year, I tried to run 540s with Gary Beck, and I uh, blew up a lot of stuff trying. Uh, this year, I don't care how fast they go, I'm not blowing up any motors. Well, you're showing great composure here. Maybe it, maybe it hasn't set in yet. You have won the U.S. National. Yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> I was already happy when I crossed the finish line. <laughs> Jim Head obviously overjoyed at his U.S. Nationals title. This leaves with the final in top fuel eliminator, 52 years old, Big Daddy Don Garlitz, against his longtime friend and competitor, 46-year-old Honey Coletta. Some 50 years of drag racing experience between these two drivers. Never before in the finals of any NHRA national event have two veterans with this much experience met to decide a title as important as the U.S. Nationals. It was 20 years ago that Big Daddy Don Garlitz won his first ever U.S. Nationals title. That and four other victories combined to make him one of the crowd favorites, as Steve found out earlier. Look at all of these shining faces uh, watching Don Garlitz and crew put the black car back together again for the final round at the U.S. Nationals and also looking on his Pat Garlitz. What an incredible day this has been. It certainly has. I just couldn't have dreamed that it could be this great. So what, went, far. <laughs> what went through your mind uh, when Don sat you down and said, Pat, we're going back and we're going back seriously? <laughs> well, at first I didn't believe him. But the more they started ordering pieces for the car and working, then I knew we were going to Indy. And yes. we're, we're building a house, and we're right in the middle of moving in. And he said, just leave the boxes, leave all the unpacking until we get back from Indy. Steve, that just shows you everything takes a back seat when Big Daddy goes racing. And racing he is against Connie Coletta, the finals in top fuel eliminator. Based on performance, it's got to be the edge to Garlitz, but we've seen upset throughout this day. And off the starting line they come. Up in smoke goes Coletta. It may be the advantage Garlitz needs. And it is Don Garlitz, his sixth U.S. Nationals title and a tremendous victory as Big Daddy has returned to championship competition. The partnership with Art Malone getting off to a great start with a U.S. Nationals victory. As we watch again, both cars leave on the green light. It is Garlitz in the near lane, Coletta in the far lane, and the tires begin to smoke on Coletta's car, indicating the loss of traction, giving a slight advantage to Garlitz. He continues to pull ahead, and at the finish line, a big victory. Don Garlitz wins the U.S. Nationals, goes home with top speed of the event, a magnificent return to NHRA drag racing. Thank you, Steve. I've had a wonderful weekend, and I've enjoyed myself tremendously. It's been great to be back. And it's great to have you back, and we look forward next year to a new car, aerodynamics, the kind of thinking only you bring to this sport. Well, I hope so. Art has injected a lot of, uh, you know, given me enthusiasm to have him come along and put the money where the most people's mouth is and get me here and buy the parts so we're capable of performing with these people, which proves that uh, you just got to have the technology. And to have an old friend, a guy who's been racing almost as long as you have in the final, what a great moment. Well, you know, Connie and I go back a long, long time. Uh, you know, he and I, uh, I, I met him when he was 17 years old. Seto Pastorian and I were going to California for the big Bakersfield Challenge, and he was a 17-year-old kid with his 57 Chevy and had a bunch of parts from Chrysler. Well, I think Pat right now doesn't mind at all leaving all those boxes in that new house. I know. <laughs> Congratulations again. He certainly is Big Daddy.